the life. Whoa. <laughs> oh, hi, everybody. What you doing? We're playing, Barney, and it feels absolutely, positively... Super D-duper? <laughs> right. It's great to be outside. It's been raining for two days, so we couldn't come outside. Mm. But it finally stopped. <laughs> Good. <laughs> oh. Oh, no. Not again. Let's find something to do inside. Okay, come on, everybody. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do on a rainy day is to tell stories. Ooh. Hey, let's make the parachute into a tent. We could pretend we're camping and tell stories around the campfire. So oh, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> there, our tent is finished. <laughs> this is great, Barney. Want to hear a scary story? Sure. <laughs> scary stories and campfires go together. <laughs> And try to scare everyone. Cause it's kind of fun getting scared when you know it's not for real. So run and buy your friends, nothing will get you, but you feel that tingly feel. You feel that tingly feel. When the story starts to get scary, giving me goosebumps galore. I just cover my ears and close my eyes, but first tell a little bit more. First, tell a little bit more. Cause it's kind of fun getting scared, and you know it's not for real. So run and buy your friends, nothing will get you, but you feel that tingly feel. You feel that tingly feel. Cause it's kind of fun getting scared, when you know it's not for real. So run and buy your friends, nothing will get you, but you feel that tingly feel. Are you ready to hear my sort of scary story? Yes. Okay, once upon a time, there were four friends, kind of like us, and one dinosaur, kind of like Barney, that were out camping in the woods on a dark night. And all of a sudden, they heard a loud crash. Like that sound? Just like that. Anyway... After the crash, the campers heard a howl. Oh! What happened next? They heard a footstep on a twig. Ouch! Oh, oh, that wasn't a twig. Someone just tripped over my tail. But who? Everybody, oh, oh, oh. what were you doing in the dark? Hi, PJ. Yeah. <laughs> My God, it was you. Jason was telling a scary story. Well, it wasn't too scary, but we didn't know it was you bumping into things in the dark. And tripping over tails. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to scare anybody, but why did you have the lights out? We were making up stories while we're waiting for the rain to stop. <laughs> oh, that sounds like fun. On rainy days at home, Warren and I play pretend with a blanket. How do you do that, Carlos? We make believe it's lots of different things, like a raft on the ocean. Ah, uh, but we don't have a blanket. I know, but we could use our imaginations and make up stories that use the parachute in different ways. Uh -oh. yeah. <laughs> I have an idea already. May I go first? Oh, okay. Sure. okay, I'll be right back. Okay, then. Uh, <laughs> I wonder what Tasha's going to do with the parachute. Well, if she uses her imagination, there are a number of things she could do. Number? Did I hear someone say number? Oh, look. Wow. Why, well, that reminds me of a story about a very lonely little number. Well, why, it's Stella, uh, I mean, Tasha the Storyteller. Jumbo. Oh. 
means hello in Swahili. Jumbo, Natasha. What's Swahili? It's a language they speak in Kenya. That's a country in Africa. Wow, I love your clothes, Tasha. You made a really cool dress out of the parachute. Thank you, Min. My parachute dress isn't exactly like the kind women wear in Africa, but sometimes their dresses have lots of pretty colors like this. My hat is called the Kufi. Did you say you have a story for us about a number? Why, indeed I do, Jason. It's a poem about a lonely little number. All right. I'm gonna tell us a story. I like it. Yeah. Once there was a number whose name was simply One. He often played all by himself, but didn't have much fun. He was feeling sad and blue until he met the number Two. They were happy as can be when introduced to number three. Soon came a knock upon the door, and in stepped jolly number four. They all beat drums with little sticks, brought by the numbers five and six. Skipping rope was really great when joined by numbers seven and eight. And one was very happy when he made friends with nine and ten. Now, I'm not lonely anymore, said number one to number four. We'll be your friends and play again, said numbers three and five and ten. I've had a lot of fun today, number one was heard to say. They finished playing many games. Can you help me say their names? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, numbers to have some fun. Let's limbo! Okay! <laughs> okay, let's see how low you can go. Uh, yeah, yeah. We love to do the number limbo. We love to do the number limbo. As we go under, we see the number is set at number three. The, the bar was set, set at number three. Everyone went under then. Now we move it lower to number two. So you can start to limbo again. We love to do the number limbo. We love to do the number limbo. As we go under, we see the number is set at number two. The bar is set at number two. Everyone went under then. Now we move it lower to number one, so you can start to limbo again. We love to do the number limbo. We love to do the number limbo. As we go under, we see the number is set at number one. The bar is set at number one. Everyone went under then. So we can't go under another number till we number limbo again. Alright! Look, Barney, they're pretending the parachute is a blanket. You're right, BJ. Oh, I think Carlos is going to tell a story. <laughs> this is a story of a boy who went to bed with his favorite pillow and his favorite teddy bear. But he couldn't fall asleep, so he called to his mother. Mom! I can't sleep. Could you bring me a glass of water, please? Here's your glass of water. Now you can go to sleep. Thank you, Mom. You're welcome, son. But even with a favorite pillow and his favorite teddy and a glass of water, the boy still couldn't fall asleep. Mom, I still can't fall asleep. So the boy's mother knew what to do. When I was a little girl, I used to pretend sheep were jumping over my bed. I'd count the sheep, and before I could say little Bo Peep, I'd fall fast asleep. So the boy's mother sang a lullaby to him. Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep and doesn't know where to find them. Leave them alone and they'll come home, dragging their tails behind them. Little boy. 
boys blue, come blow your horn. The sheep's in the meadow, the cow's in the corn. Where's the boy who looks after the sheep? He's under the hay that fast asleep. Will you waken him? No, not I. For if I do, he's sure to cry. <laughs> And so after counting lots of sheep, the little boy fell fast asleep. The end. I like your story, Carlos. The part about counting sheep was funny. Can I wake up now? Because I like to know where those sheep came from. <laughs> oh, look. They're all over there. Maybe their little Bo Peeps lost sheep. Yeah. I think they're my sheep, Barney. I followed them here. Look, everybody. It's our good friend, Tommy DePaula. Hi, Tommy. Hi, Barney. Hi, everybody. Glad to see you again. Hi, Mr. DePaula. Call me Tommy, please. Okay? Did you say those sheep were yours, Tommy? Yes, Jason. They live right in this book. And they're always running off to help people who can't fall asleep. Oh, well, maybe I can help you get them back into the book. Could you do that, Barney? That would be great. Well, try. <laughs> I'll just sit this right down over here. <clears throat> Little sheep with wagging tails and fluffy coats indeed. Please come back into your book. The story then we'll read. Oh, boy. Oh, there you go, Tommy. Oh, thank you, Barney. Oh, you're very welcome. That looks like a fun story. And now that all the sheep are back in the book, would you read it to us? I certainly will, Barney. Oh, good. We won't make a peep while you read to us about sheep. Okay, everyone. The book is called Charlie Needs a Cloak. Oh. Did you draw the pictures, too, Tommy? I sure did, BJ. I am the author and the illustrator. Okay, everyone? Gather around. Uh, oh, good. Oh. Story time. Uh, this is gonna be neat. Here we go. Okay. Charlie was a shepherd. He had a cozy house, a big hat, a crook, and a flock of fat sheep. <laughs> but everyone said, Charlie needs a cloak. Yeah. Poor Charlie. <laughs> he really needed a new cloak. <laughs> so in the spring, Charlie sheared his sheep. <laughs> he washed the wool. <laughs> and carded the wool to straighten it out. Then, Charlie spun the wool into yarn. Now, Charlie wanted a red cloak, so he picked some pokeweed berries during the late summer and boiled them over a fire. Then, Charlie dyed the yarn red in the berry juice. After the yarn was dry, Charlie put the strands on the loom. Look at the mouse! And every fall evening, he wove the yarn into cloth. Charlie put the cloth on the table and cut it into pieces. Then he pinned the pieces together and sewed them. And then when winter came, Charlie had a beautiful new red cloak. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to have to go. I promised that I'd deliver this book to the library today. Oh. And Barney, thank you for helping me get my sheep back in the book. <laughs> and thank you for reading your book to us, Tommy. Oh, you're welcome, Barney. Cool. Well, goodbye, everybody. Oh, so I'll see you again, I hope. Okay? Bye, 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 Tommy. See you soon. Bye. bye. <laughs> Has anyone seen BJ? Who is supposed to tell the next story? Oh. Hey, everybody! Look what I just made with a parachute! Oh. Wow, a big umbrella! Come on, we'll go outside and play, because this umbrella is big enough for a dinosaur and all his friends! Okay! All right, come on, guys! Yeah. <laughs> My, isn't this cozy? Oh, uh, uh, BJ, uh... I don't think your umbrella is quite big enough for all your friends. 
Oops. <laughs> you would get kind of wet, wouldn't you, Barney? <laughs> oh, I think so. <laughs> uh, I guess my umbrella isn't big enough for everybody after all. Oh. Friends, I'm glad you came to play. Our fun and learning never ends. Here's what we did today. Sometimes rainy days make us sad because we can't go outside to play. But there are lots of things you can do indoors to have fun. Have you ever pretended to camp out and tell stories? You can read books or do the limbo with friends. How low can you go? <laughs> Tasha looked very pretty in the dress she made out of our parachute. Counting these sheep helped Jason fall asleep. Then they went right back into their storybook. Maybe when the rain slows down, you can go back outside under a big umbrella with friends you love. And remember, I love you. The WLIW-21 broadcast of this program would not have been possible without the financial support of viewers like you. Stay tuned next for information about a special thank you gift we can offer you for your support. Don't go away. There's another episode of this series coming right up next on WLIW-21.